Yesterday, Lilith dropped a bombshell on the community by revealing one of the newest infantry commanders coming soon to Rise of Kingdoms. That is none other than William Wallace. And as soon as that information dropped, I posted a video yesterday covering all of his skills, plus his brand new talent tree, which is focused on smite damage. And if you guys missed that video, go ahead and check that out because that's going to be a nice baseline for everything that we're going to talk about here in this video. Because when a new commander first drops, it's always exciting. There's a lot of hype around the commander and everyone wants to just get their videos out as soon as possible, release their first impressions and discuss everything about that new commander. But sometimes when we're caught up in the hype, we miss a lot of the small details that are actually revealed when these new commanders are announced. So today I actually have a notepad here. I have 12 different things that I want to talk about here in this video that you might have missed about the William Wallace reveal yesterday. But first, what's going on guys? Cheers. Let me just say there's a lot of exciting things about William Wallace, but probably my most favorite part of yesterday was seeing the cav mains just seething bro they were in shambles it was hysterical people were so mad they're like oh my god this is what infantry gets and we just got belisarius prime oh my god people were saying like oh i just invested in belisarius and now we get this dude and he's so much better and it's not fair because infantry is so good and i'm just such a listen if you guys are subscribed to the channel which hopefully you are then you would have known that i told you only wells should be getting belisarius prime if you wasted your sculptures after that that's on you and I'm just as much a cav main as I am an infantry main okay so either way no matter how you cut it I'm winning so it feels pretty good okay trolling aside now that I'm done being a head let's jump into the things you might have missed about William Wallace but first drop a thumbs up on the video it really does help out the channel a ton it'll push this video into the algorithm okay we're gonna start with something very simple here and that is the second skill it says while this troop is on the map infantry units gain these stats and what this means is that this skill the entire of the skill will not work in a garrison okay so if you were planning on doing a gorgo primary with this commander secondary that's probably not going to be a great strategy it's i mean there's there's lots of synergy here just because they're both smite damage commanders but if you look at the rest of william wallace's kit there's literally not another single stat point anywhere to be found and so would you want to put him in a garrison without any of his stats i don't know maybe the synergy is so crazy that it might actually work but to me the fact that they made the second skill only available on the map tells me that they don't necessarily want this commander to be so broken that he can work in a Gorgo garrison in the same vein as this the fourth skill only works when you are attacking a troop on the map so that means that if William Wallace is part of a rally he is not going to be hitting a troop on the map he will be attacking a stronghold whether it's a flag or a fortress or a pass and those things are not on the map it's also worth noting that means this skill also won't be good when you're trying to swarm down a flag right if you're using William Wallace as part of a swarming lineup then this is not going to work when you're swarming down that stronghold and finally it's also worth noting that if you're attacking somebody that's in a resource node for example I'd have to double check this but I'm pretty sure those don't count as on the map either now this fourth skill is decent I wouldn't say it's it's a crazy good skill right I mean for example if you look at Yi Song Ye's fourth skill he gives you 50 percent skill damage which is probably better than this but you know again it is worth noting that the fourth skill doesn't work in rallies the second skill doesn't work in garrisons and so most likely okay and we'll have to wait for testing but most likely William Wallace is going to exclusively be an open field commander which I mean typically anybody with the versatility tree that tends to be the case but I just want to point that out okay I just had to turn on my fan for those of you that don't know I'm in New York City and it's been like a billion degrees the past week so I'm sweating in here and my AC is loud so I'm compromising with the fan hopefully it's not too loud for you guys maybe you can't hear it at all anyway the third thing that you might have missed on his kit and this kind of relates to the first point is that he actually isn't tanky and when it comes to being an infantry commander like yes he has the infantry talent tree and of course we don't know exactly what the stats and what these extra talents are going to be in the smite talent tree but if we're just looking at his kit he only has 10 percent health and 30 percent attack so like in general this is really not a very tanky infantry commander at all like 10 percent health is like 
I think that's what Sargon has, right? Like it's really not that tanky. Sorry. Sargon has 10% attack, 20% health, 10% defense. It's been so long since I even looked at him. It's insane. So yeah, for an infantry commander, really not that tanky. Now this isn't the end of the world. For example, if you look at Gorgo, she has 40% attack and that's it in the open field. That's all she gets. And she gets no March speed. So in this instance, you lose a little bit of the attack, but you get the health, which is definitely a good trade-off. And for that reason, I actually feel like like this is kind of just a better Gorgo for the open field, right? Like it's just a better stat distribution. You get the March speed that she doesn't have. You're dealing more single target damage, even though the rage requirements a little bit higher, but that begs the question, like if you really want to pair this commander with somebody that gives you a good distribution of stats, you probably wouldn't pair it with Gorgo, which is something that I did suggest in my original video. And maybe it is possible to do. We'll obviously have to wait and see with testing. And I think that that's a big thing. Like a lot of people are like losing their mind over this, the smite talent tree here. And we're going to talk about talents in a second, because that's actually a big component of the reveal for William Wallace. Okay. So don't get it twisted. We're going to talk about that in a second. But if you did a pairing of William Wallace and Gorgo, no matter who's primary or whatever, you're looking at 70% attack, 10% health for the open field. And both of them are single target damage damage like that's really not tanky like I guess of course if Gorgo was primary she has a defense tree so there's like a little bit of tankiness there but like I don't know it just seems a little bit too squishy right I mean think about like back in the day when people would run like Guan Alex that was a big problem with Guan Alex is that it was just so squishy like you could just swarm it down and it just pops like a balloon like even as an infantry pairing it just didn't hold up and we're going to talk more about Alexander the Great later because I do think there's a lot of implications with William Wallace coming into the game because I, I know a lot of people have been running Liu Che with Alex and that's been performing really well I used it in my last KVK I made a whole video talking about why that pairing works so incredibly well and so a lot of people look at William Wallace as like okay is this Alexander the Great Prime like is he gonna just be replacing Alexander the Great as that second smite damage commander with Liu Che maybe and we will talk in depth about that later but I just wanted to point out that maybe this isn't a great pairing for Gorgo because the stat distribution isn't that tanky and we also have to keep in mind that there is another infantry commander in the way right like most likely they did already sneak peek their two silhouettes and now we know one of them is infantry so that means that the other one's probably the other infantry commander this is because it's a versatility commander most likely the wheel of fortune commander and so the other commander is probably the mightiest governor for infantry and that means that we are due for an infantry conquering commander and so maybe that rally commander will have tanky stats and maybe this would be just a perfect like pairing like there you go now you're done you have that commander and you have William Wallace and that's your pair but if that commander doesn't have tanky stats then you know again you run into the Gorgo situation of it's like do you want a bunch of infantry attack and not that many stat points like that could be a thing and if so maybe that's not the pair the fourth thing that I want to touch on here that you might have missed is that looking at the entire kit for William Wallace he does not have a debuff and he does not have AoE and these are two things that are almost always expected of open field meta commanders these days right like usually for a commander to land in the meta they have to have decent damage factor and also either be AoE or debuff or in some cases both right if you look at Liu Che he has AoE and a debuff if you look at Zhuye Liang he has AoE and a debuff if you look at Herman Prime AoE and a debuff if you look at Guan Yu AoE and a debuff CPO Prime AoE and a debuff Nevsky doesn't have AoE but he does have a lot of stats and a really good debuff and so you could see the trend here where if you look at the top of the meta like all the best open field meta pairings they either have a debuff or AoE and we don't see that here on him at all he's got decent damage his stats are a little bit squishy right the March speed is nice for infantry you're a little bit tanky here with taking less normal damage but that's like whatever you get even more damage here with the active skill basically either for him or for whoever the other smite damage that you're pairing with him is and then also even more damage boosts here on the fourth skill and then here we've got on the expertise you know we have the shield and removal of slow effects this is supportive right giving a shield is supportive but it is a 10 second cooldown and so looking at his kit like no way AOE, no debuff he's got a bunch of things on his kit that boosts his own damage and the damage of the other commander he's with if they're smite and like yeah he gives shields but yeah maybe William Wallace looks really good on paper but 
he might not actually make it to the top of the meta I mean just historically like he's missing those things that are pretty commonplace at the top of the meta these days and before anybody comments I know he can technically hit multiple troops with his damage factor on the active skill but I don't really consider that AoE I mean it's not actually AoE like on the field based on how this is worded but also like it's only 300 damage factor which isn't nothing but like is Chook an AoE commander then I, I don't know I just don't really think of Chook as an AoE commander even Leonidas I barely consider him an AoE commander it's only 600 damage factor like by that logic do we consider a Manatorian AoE commander like I get that like technically she is but like I don't know the damage factor is just so low I kind of just like write it off as like a little bonus I don't really consider it like truly an AoE commander like Artemisia or like Zhuge Liang like these are heavy hitter AoE commanders and so I just don't think this cuts it especially because it is actually conditional right like you actually have to be getting hit by three enemies to deal that damage to those three enemies it's not just something that you get for free there's a cost and condition to it and you won't get it every time now speaking of the expertise here we know that it removes slowdown effects it dispels them okay and one thing that you might not have noticed about this expertise is that whether or not it dispels the slowdown depends on what's triggering the expertise right so for example this the second bullet point here says that dispel effects from active skills can be prevented by the silenced effect so what this is implying is that if you know if you use your active skill and it triggers the expertise you would remove the slowdown debuff but if you're silenced then maybe you won't that could be a thing here it says passive skill dispel effects can take effect no matter what so what that means is if you would trigger your expertise because you were slowed then regardless of if you're silenced or not this will trigger this is kind of a, a very nuanced bullet point here and so it's going to be interesting to see how this actually works in game but I guess what I'm taking away from this is that this might actually trigger slightly less frequently than you think especially again I'm going to point to the 10 second cooldown that's insane but the other thing that I want to mention about the expertise here is something that was mentioned to me from Mr Siege many of you may have heard of him already he has a YouTube channel where he focuses of course on siege units and being a ranged player but he pointed out to me that both Gajamata on his fourth skill and Margaret on her third skill have March speed reductions here and so it's possible that the introduction of William Wallace and his expertise to sort of dispel all of the slowdowns on the field might be sort of a counter to these two ranged commanders right because as I mentioned in my previous video talking about William Wallace there's already so many commanders in the game that have slowdown effects right we saw the slowdown effects on Liu Che's active skill we have a slowdown on Huo we have a slowdown on Ethelflaed we have a slowdown on the original William William. there's a slowdown on Boudicca Prime there's even a slowdown on Cao Cao right there's a slowdown on every commander in the game we even have slowdowns on Richard okay it's on his expertise here this is actually an insane slowdown by the way the point is not only is there just an insane amount of slowdowns amongst regular commanders but there's also even more slowdowns amongst the ranged commanders 50 percent of the ranged commanders have slowdowns on them right and so maybe Lilith just saw this and said okay there's just too much slowdowns especially with the new you know ranged is gaining a bit of traction these days maybe we need to tone it down a bit and give a commander that can just aoe dispel it because it's becoming ridiculous and i agree okay that's everything that you might have missed about his skills and the kit that he brings with him now let's talk about some of the things you might have missed about the smite talent tree okay now this part of the video is going to be a bit more speculative because we don't actually have this in the game and so we don't really know what some of these other talents are and we also don't know how many talent points it's going to cost to get to some of these higher talents in the tree but the number one talent that a lot of people have been talking about is this talent number three fight or flight it says whenever this commander's troop deals any type of smite damage all troops hit lose 45 rage this is an insane talent okay and the reason that this is insane is not because of William Wallace but it's because of Liu Che if you did William Wallace primary with Liu Che secondary based on the way that that talent is worded in the revealed picture then that means that this active skill would reduce each targets rage by 45 and that would go up to five targets because you can hit five troops with a single AoE you could wipe away 225 rage from the field instantly with that talent and Liu Che and that's insane but of course William Wallace is also dealing smite damage to up to three targets and if there's no cooldown on this talent then 
your primary target could be taking that 45 rage reduction twice in a row right because you deal your smite damage of 2400 then you would deal extra smite damage so you'd be hitting that target with two instances of smite damage and then you'd be hitting them with liu chase smite damage so for three turns in a row you're going to be removing 45 rage 45 rage 45 rage and of course if there's other enemies nearby you're going to reduce 45 rage from them as well okay so the amount of rage that you could be reducing with william wallace primary liu chase secondary is actually insane like it it is so insane based on how this is worded and it's for that reason that i would be willing to bet this talent has a cooldown if you guys didn't know in the past year or so when lilith went through and sort of retranslated all of the skills and talents to be a little bit more accurate to how they actually work in the game you'll notice that for some of the talents they actually added a cooldown okay hold a line in the infantry tree has a three second cooldown recently they just updated the last stand talent in the attack tree they didn't actually change how it works but they made it clear what it actually does and here you see a two second cooldown even snare of thorns has a three second cooldown and all of these talents that we're looking at right now i would argue are nowhere near as powerful as this fight or flight talent okay so again i want to make it very clear we won't know exactly how this works until it comes into the game but everyone is saying this talent is extremely broken and i would agree with you this is i mean if there's no cool out here this is probably the best talent in the game but let's be honest guys i bet there's a cooldown i bet there's a cooldown whether it's two seconds five seconds whatever i bet there's a cooldown here and we'll have to wait and see just how powerful this is with that cooldown in the game it's also worth noting that maybe this isn't translated perfectly i mean look at this sentence right here it's says images are for illustration purposes only in-game content is subject to change so nothing shown here is set in stone it could be the case that this talent is only going to affect your target okay not anything hit by aoe or anything else like that just the one that you're hitting actively maybe it only works on that one target and there's a three second cooldown and so you actually miss timing for liu che's active skill when he's secondary that could be the case we don't know and i just want to set the expectation for you guys to just basically expect this talent talent to not be game breaking it could be I mean it could be who knows right it could be insane but I'd be willing to bet there's a cooldown or there's a catch or something like that the seventh thing that you might have missed is the wording for to the bitter end that is the number one here on the talent tree and this is actually worded quite weird now one thing that I immediately thought of and I think everyone probably thought of this is the effortless talent in the attack tree okay the wording is very similar but it's quite different effortless gives you two and a half percent every 10 10 seconds but this is actually bonus damage this is all damage and so what that means is after 10 seconds you get two and a half percent after 20 seconds you'll have five percent and after 40 seconds total you would be at your 10 percent cap okay 40 seconds for 10 percent all damage this talent is actually much worse than that because it says every 10 seconds you get two percent bonus to all types of smite damage dealt so not all damage just smite damage and every 10 second interval is only giving you two percent instead of two and a half so what does that mean after 10 seconds it's two percent 20 seconds is four percent 30 seconds is six percent 40 seconds is eight percent and 50 seconds is ten percent okay so it actually takes 10 more seconds to reach the maximum value of this talent compared to effortless in the attack tree and it's worse than that because it's only smite damage not all damage but there's also a catch here because this says every 10 seconds after this commander's troop enters a battle this does not say you must stay in battle which for effortless they make very clear it is only while in combat you're going to be getting this bonus but for this talent it could be the case that once you enter battle the timer starts and it doesn't stop until you go back to your city now what's the probability of it working that way probably not right i expect it to work more like effortless but maybe you don't have to stay in combat maybe just the longer that a smite tree commander is on the field the more they just ramp up that damage and that would actually be really cool right it would be really cool to have a commander that the longer you survive the more you're going to hit hard with your smite skills and also i think that would kind of counterbalance the fact that it's literally just worse than effortless right it takes more time and it's more specific with the type of damage so maybe to compensate for that fact that it's worse in those two ways perhaps you don't have to stay in combat 
to get that bonus and I think that would be a nice way to balance it out you just have to send out your army and enter battle exit battle and then you just stand there for 50 seconds and then boom now you're at your 10 percent more smite damage that'd be cool right it's interesting how they worded this in the image and I'm interested to see how it actually works in the game the eighth thing you might have missed is actually number two here it's called thick skin it says you take six percent less skill damage that's a very vanilla talent and it's pretty much identical to heraldic shield which we see in the skill tree we see it right at the very front of the skill tree actually and we also see an even better version of that talent in loose formation in the support tree you take nine percent less skill damage so it's even more tanky here and once again it's at the very start of the talent tree but for the smite tree it's one of the last talents that you actually can acquire and so one thing you might not have noticed is that this talent might not even be worth getting depending on what else these talents do like we know number three might be broken and that might be worth getting but like this talent here might be worth getting these talents might be worth getting but who knows what these talents are maybe these talents are complete garbage and it's actually not worth going all the way up to number two just to get six percent less skill damage taken right like I don't know this feels really deep into the tree for such a vanilla talent and whether or not you get this I think is really going to come down to these talents in front of them or maybe there's like some March speed here that would make it really cool to grab the ninth thing that you might have missed is that this talent right here is a hammer which is obvious but it looks identical to martial mastery which is actually a really good talent in the attack tree and one that pretty much everybody gets when they're running Liu Che because it's straight up a six percent bonus to normal damage which means it's a six percent bonus to smite damage as well and if you're not dealing any skill damage then there's no downside to this now it's worth noting that Lilith does typically reuse some of these little eye icons in different colors and a lot of times they'll do completely different things when they're in different trees so really we can't make a conclusive judgment on what this talent is going to do until we actually see it in the game but I just wanted to point out that it is the same logo as martial mastery it's also in a blue talent tree and it's also in the smite tree which martial mastery was basically a smite talent all along we just didn't know it because smite damage wasn't a thing until Liu Che and Gorgo so it's possible that this is martial mastery or maybe an, a modified version maybe a slightly better version or maybe it's you know nine percent more damage instead of six but it's only smite instead of normal who knows I'm really interested to see what this talent actually is the tenth thing that I want to talk about here is this talent right here it looks like it's a, a helmet that is on fire and we see this style of talent really often throughout these talent trees oh, I don't think we've ever Ever seen this specifically but for example burning blood is a skull on fire and it says whenever you are hit with any type of basic attack you get six rage when we look at the skull on fire in the infantry tree it's a little bit different and this is what I mean like they're the same logo but different colors and they're called something different and they do something different right and so that's why martial mastery and that hammer might be completely different right there's really no telling but they do share the similarity in that it grants rage right undying fury says whenever you launch a basic attack you get nine rage same thing in the skill tree burning blood whenever you launch a basic attack you gain nine rage okay so in every instance of a skull or head on fire we get rage for basic attacks and so I would be willing to bet that this talent probably operates similar right you probably get rage for either every basic attack that you do or every basic attack that you take I hope it's every basic attack that you do because Liu Che does extra basic attacks and so that would make this really good although he's already got plenty of rage on his kit so he probably doesn't even need the extra rage like that but anyway I just wanted to point out that most likely even though we don't know what this talent does it's probably going to be some sort of little rage engine which I think is nice it's right at the front of the tree it's going to be easy to grab and I think that's going to be really good now all in all we've talked a lot about some of the talents here and you know the fact that some of these talents might not actually be that great right I mean thick skin is good but it takes a lot of talent points to get there it seems fight or flight looks broken basically but it's probably if I were to bet it would probably have a cooldown and thunderous smite I mean this is the capstone talent and it's a 30 percent chance to increase your smite damage by 10 percent I really don't know if this is gonna have a cooldown or not it might but for five talent points and you know you would have to max out the rest of the tree to get here that's extremely expensive for only a 30 percent chance of it occurring it's better than 10 percent some talents are only 10 percent and so like this is three times more likely to occur than them but even still it's only a 10 percent bonus which is good but I mean again you have to go all in on the tree you have to get every single talent to get that right is that worth it maybe maybe not and so the initial first impressions of the smite tree were that 
it's this broken game breaking crazy thing but if we assume for a second that my new analysis of the smite tree is that maybe it's just an average talent tree maybe it's actually not better than the attack tree maybe it's just maybe once we find out all the cooldowns and what these other talents are maybe we come to the conclusion that the smite tree is just okay it's just average and if that conclusion is correct then the 11th thing that you might have missed is that if the smite tree is lackluster then william wallace might be doomed to being a secondary commander behind liu che because of his third skill lion of the north says that when there's a smite damage factor over a thousand there's an 80 percent chance that you increase it by 40 percent and so what you would want to do because the cooldown is so insane is that you would want to have liu che primary and william wallace secondary because that would give you an 80 percent chance that your liu che's active skill is boosted by 40 percent guys that is actually insane he already has the highest aoe damage in the game if we're just talking raw numbers right like 2250 times five targets that is the highest in the game raw numbers we're not talking skill damage bonuses all that other stuff so to boost that by 40 percent is actually insane and again i think that that is probably only going to be the case if this might tree has no cooldowns on anything then you're probably going to run william wallace primary liu che secondary talent number three is would will just be insane at that point but if not then william wallace might always be secondary to liu che and the final thing that you might have missed about william wallace is that it's not actually clear that he's better than Alexander the Great. And I know that that sounds like kind of insane because everyone's hyped about William Wallace, but let's really think about this for a second. Okay. William Wallace is a single target damage commander. He's kind of squishy. Yes. He's got mark speed. He has smite damage, which is very cool, but he has no AOE and no debuffs. Okay. If we look at Alexander the Great, he has a couple of things that are really going for him. First of all, he's immune to the damage reducing debuffs of Liu Che and Zhuge Li young two of the most common meta commanders in the game those two are arguably the best commanders in the game and i don't think that william wallace is going to change that by the way i still think the two kings of the game right now are liu che and juge leong they're the best commanders so alexander the great is immune to that but furthermore alexander the great has way more stats than william wallace just objectively first of all he's faster than william wallace he has 30% attack, which is what William Wallace has also. Now, William Wallace has 10% health, but Alexander the Great actually has the double museum buff here. So Alexander the Great actually has 20% defense, which I would say is probably comparable, if not slightly better than the 10% defense on William Wallace. Furthermore, he takes 6% less normal damage, which yes, William Wallace's skill is slightly better or percent better, right? But just by getting the double relic on Alex, you're getting more than half of this value from Alex's relic alone. And that's not to mention all the stats on the fourth skill for Alexander the Great, right? If you don't have a shield, you get another 40% attack. And if you do have a shield, you have 30% defense. And so we actually live in a world where Alexander the Great I think is, I think we'll have to see. I think he's tankier than William Wallace. He just has more stats objectively and a similar amount, slightly less normal damage taken reduction. Alex also gets a shield and gives shields to other nearby allies. And I would say probably the biggest thing that keeps Alex relevant with Liu Che is his instant proc damage. Yes, the 1700 damage factor is lower for sure than the active skill on William Wallace, but you do not need rage for this okay you could pop this turn one if you wanted to and run away if you get lucky of course right so yes his damage factor is lower but it can trigger multiple times you don't need rage for it you go in and out of battles and if you retreat before your active skill goes off it's okay because you might have still popped the 1700 from alex this is what makes him so broken with liu che right and so when we compare this to william wallace he has more stats than william wallace he's faster than william wallace he's immune to all damage reduction debuffs and his expertise has an insane debuff up to three nearby enemy troops take 30 percent more damage for four seconds that's an insane debuff okay and remember what we talked about earlier william wallace doesn't have aoe he doesn't have debuffs alexander the great doesn't have aoe either but he's got an insane debuff here so if i'm being 100 percent honest i don't think that it is self-evident that william wallace will be objectively better than alexander the great on day one we'll have to test it i really comparing them on paper it's like william wallace deals more damage with the active skill compared to the instant proc on alex that's a point for william wallace his stats i would argue are worse than alexander the great especially when you take into account the museum relic for alex and down the line alex could get a third relic upgrade guys and yes the massive increase in damage that is possible with the third skill here is great same thing with giving three thousand damage factor mighty shields that's insane 
but both of these things have 10 second cooldowns guys 10 seconds that's insane that's a really long cooldown it makes it really hard to get the best value out of these skills now again we have to wait and see and if i were honest i would say it's probable that william wallace will be better than alexander the great I, if i were like a betting man right i would say william wallace will probably perform better than alexander the great but again you just can't deny the fact that alexander the great is so easy to use because of the instant proc on his second skill you just go in and out and just you just sometimes pop a 1700 it's just like insane how easy it is you're kind of like cheating you're getting free active skills basically with alexander the great and that's what makes him so good with liu che's expertise so to me it's not immediately self-evident that william wallace will absolutely kill alexander the great furthermore what if okay hear me out what if william wallace is the primary and alex is the secondary and then you run your liu che with cpo i mean we're ignoring the fact that there's another infantry commander coming right but if you paired william wallace with alexander the great then william wallace suddenly has a bunch of infantry defense that he actually needs it's a very fast army you get the debuff from the active skill expertise on alexander the great there's no debuff in william wallace so alex gives him that debuff and now you can't reduce the damage of william wallace either both these commanders are giving tons of shields and there's no conflict of interest here because the mighty shields can stack on top of the smaller shields from alex so both commanders are just giving shields to everybody nearby the only lack of synergy here is the smite damage bonus this smite damage bonus is completely lost on alexander the great right and also roughly one in five active skills from william wallace are going to miss the 40 percent bonus from lion of the north and there will be nothing on alexander the great that could catch up and make up for that so the pairing isn't perfect but i I think it's worth testing i think that could secretly be the best pair hey alexander the great surprised everybody with with liu che it wouldn't surprise me if he surprised everyone again with william wallace liu che cpo or i should say cpo liu che is already insane okay so what if we just move that instant proc cheat code on the second skill for alex we just move that over to william wallace and we get to keep enjoying that little cheat code along with the museum buffs for alex it's not perfect but i think there might be something here and i'm really excited to see how some of the early test results come out i think on paper that pairing probably won't look great like in a simulator for example but in practice the instant proc from alex is is wild but of course people could just continue running the liu che with alex because remember alex's instant proc happens more with liu che and so it actually would be better to keep those two together and then maybe we just replace guan yu we put guan on the bench and we just do cpo prime as primary with william wallace secondary depending on the synergy of the smite talent tree but then the question becomes is William Wallace actually going to be performing better than Guan Yu because Guan Yu I mean he's old but guys it's still a 2000 damage factor AoE three targets with the silence another massive damage factor on the fourth skill as well and so you'd be losing the Guan Yu AoE in exchange for a much stronger single target hit with a possibility of hitting multiple targets they both have 30 percent attack but William Wallace gets a little bit of health slightly more march speed right and the smite damage bonus is completely completely wasted on CPO and the normal damage bonus isn't as good as if he were paired with another smite damage commander also same thing with the Alex energy like this part of the skill is not really going to do anything for CPO either so one in five times you're just going to lose that so is William Wallace definitely better than Guan in the CPO pairing I don't know we're gonna have to wait and see anyway guys that was 12 things that you might have missed from the William Wallace initial reveal honestly it was probably 13 or 14 because I sprinkled in a couple of other things there but I would love to hear what you guys think about these things in the comments section below what is your interpretation of William Wallace do you think he's like game breaking or do you think he's just average I mean to me personally I think Lee Chase stronger than William Wallace and I think on an open field level I think William Wallace Wallace is better than Gorgo and we'll have to see if he's better with Liu Che than Alex but either way while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a Rise of Kingdoms video and drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kingdoms players might see it and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omni Arc I will talk to you guys again soon peace